Hi hey folks. So now we're going to talk about another property uh, which is important in capturing networks and in particular is one which is looking at a local property of the networks. So in particular um, what's going on when we zoom in on, on given nodes and uh, begin to understand the relationship between different ties in the network. Um, this is known as clustering and in particular, when we begin to think about um, asking how dense is a network at a local level, we could ask a question of, you know, what fraction of the people who I'm friends with are friends with each other? And so clustering looks at if we have a given node I and we look at two of I's friends, J and K, what's the chance that those two are related to each other? So what's the frequency of links among the friends of I. So if we want to look at a given node I and ask what the clustering is for that node I in a given network, then we can say, okay, let's look at I's neighborhood and look at all the pairs of friends that I has, two different K's and J's in that, in that neighborhood, and keep track of, for those possible pairs, how many of them are actually uh, connected to each other compared to the overall number of them. And so that gives just a, a fraction of how many of, of your friends are friends with each other. Um, and then average clustering, we can just take that number and average it across all the different nodes in the network. Okay, So that's a particular measure of um, clustering. And um, there are different ways to measure clustering, and so what we did was just do the average, so first calculate it for a given node i, and then average across all different nodes. And what that does is it weights this clustering node by node. And another way to do this would be instead to look at overall clustering. So look at um, all possible nodes and pairs of friends that they have, and ask overall in the whole network, every time we've got a, a, a particular situation which looks like this, what's the chance that it's connected um, and those uh, others are connected? And so instead of first doing this node by node and then averaging, the, this is done overall, and um, we're comparing out of all the possible triples in the network um, where we see uh, them connected in a, in a situation like this, what's the frequency with which they're connected over? So this is overall clustering. And these numbers can be different. So which way you measure it, whether you're weighting it by node or doing it as overall possible triangles in, in the network, is going to can possibly give you different answers. So just as an example, let's suppose we had a situation which looked like this where we have in particular uh, you know, a given node here at the center and we keep forming, th th this node has groups of friends um, in threes that are all friends with each other um, but aren't friends across these different groups of three. So we keep looking at these different groups of three and um, what do we find? In terms of average clustering, this is going to go to 10 to 1. So, you know, for instance, out of nine, node nine's friends, um, every pair of friends that nine has know each other. And that's true for 10 as well and eight. So as we look at most of these nodes, um, they're actually clustered at 100%. All of their pairs of friends are friends with each other. Um, but when we look at one, very few of one's friends are going to actually be friends with each other. And interestingly enough, if you began to keep adding more and more groups like this, the number of triangles that you form in the network, a lot of the triangles are actually going to be triangles um, which go through one. And so the overall clustering can be much, much smaller than the average clustering in a network like this. And so you know, what you're measuring, whether you're doing it node by node or whether you're doing it overall by looking at possible triangles and then asking whether they're completed, um, you can get different answers. And so they measure different things, and, and it's important to sort of keep that, um, keep that straight. Now, uh, one thing that's going to be important in this um, setting 
is that when we compare this to what happens in a, in a network uniformly at random, if we ask what's the clustering number in a uniformly at random network, well, this is just simply going to be P. So any time we actually look at, at a connection like this um, and we ask what's the possibility of, of this link being present, the possibility of this link being present ignores all the rest of the information. It was just formed with some probability P. So the clustering is going to be P regardless of whether we look at average or overall. Um, we're always going to get an answer of P for what that number is. And so if we're looking at very, very large networks and people have a relatively small number of friends compared to the overall network, then P is going to be going to zero. And so clustering in a Poisson random network or an erdos renyi random network, this GNP kind of network, is going to go to zero um, as N grows if P is actually getting small, uh, which will often be the case in a lot of, of settings we're going to be interested in. So um, what that tells us is that uh, random networks are going to tend to have very low clustering if we're looking at uniform at random. And then we can look at actually what we see in data. And when we look in data um, across a variety of different kinds of, of data sets, we tend to see um, numbers which are much higher than would have occurred at random. So uh, a study of prison relationships by McRae in 1960, um, clustering is about 0.31. It's about 0.01 if you do the following calculation. Look at the same expected degree, but instead look at uh, a, a GNP model. Um, so then there's, there's basically about 1.3% of the, of the links are present. And so your, your clustering should be 1.3 if it was uniformly at random, and yet it's 31% in the data. So that tells us that the network looks dramatically different than what would have happened if you'd put these links down uniformly at random. Co-authorships, 15% um, in math co-authorships. Here you see that the P is extremely tiny. These are large graphs with, with a lot of mathematicians never having collaborated together. Um, 0.09 in biology, um, again, so, so here you see much higher numbers than you would have seen at random. Um, World Wide Web, um, if you look at it without uh, paying attention to direction, you're going to get about 11%, um, again, a much smaller number if you don't. If you look back to our uh, data from the Florentine um, marriages, and, and in this case, uh, here I've included the business dealings as well, um, so this is Paget and Ansel's data from the 1430s. Um, here you get a clustering of about 0.46. Uh, at random, it would be at about 0.29. So that's another situation where we've got um, substantially higher clustering than at random. So this is another uh, property of networks. This has been a more local property of networks. Um, looking at, at how the, the links relate to each other, not just how they're distributed over the network and so forth. Um, so we've, we've taken a look at, at a variety of, of different measures. Um, we're going to now begin to look at putting nodes in context and, and other kinds of things. So additional definitions that will help us go forward in, in managing to keep track of networks and talk about their properties and talk about their characteristics in a meaningful way.